At his quiet country home in rural Vermont, Bill Kilgore of Surrogate Son provides personalized end-of-life care. As a private case manager trained in gerontology with nursing experience in rehab at the Medical Center Hospital of Vermont, Kilgore saw a need for personalized space and care for individuals at the end of their lives. His hospice home accommodates up to two patients at a time, as well as visiting family members, and he is dedicated to providing 24-hour care and an approach to well-being that enables his patients to die well. We sat down with Bill in his kitchen to learn more. What is personalized end-of-life care? It, that starts with continual care. That starts with a continuous, um, a daily understanding of what the situation is. It's what you'll see in hospitals and nursing homes is shift changes and people changes and and people come in and have had a had had a day over here and they're bringing that with them into this patient. They may be very good and very well meaning, but that's the snapshot they're seeing. And very often judgments and decisions will be made on that snapshot. And it oftentimes, in my experience, is only part of the whole. It's mm-hmm. just a snapshot. Yeah. So you have to read. You have to, you have to rely on your instincts. But you can't do that unless you have a little background, unless you have a little personal background with that person. It's really just a matter of how she looks to me this morning and how she's acting to me this morning based on what she looked like Thursday and what she looked like on Monday. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. and it's easier to do that if you're here. What does it mean to have a good death? If all things are equal emotionally, if you've, if you've reached some sort of an equilibrium with the family and, and with outside influences and, it's, and the, the patient's okay with all that stuff, um, and the disease, once you've gotten some sort of a handle on what the disease might be doing so you can treat it properly, whether it might be causing anxiety or agitation or pain, so that you can reach a level where they're comfortable. So whatever work they need to do to die can start to happen. That becomes, there's a lot of, there's a lot of metaphors around that, but we were talking about one foot in, in more of a living world and one foot in a new world that, of course, I can't describe that, but what I've seen is a, a comfortability and then a certain willingness to go somewhere, to, to move forward into something that I don't know what it is. But what I've seen is um, it's not unpleasant. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not a scary thing. Mm-hmm. Some people will, will uh, speak. They'll speak to faces and names long deceased. They'll say they want to go home. They're ready to go home. Mm-hmm. And that, that is their word for wherever that comfortable place is that they're trying to get to. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's encouraging. That's very soothing and comforting to me mm-hmm. <laughs> as a bystander for this, that they're going, it's a good thing that's happening. Um, and honestly, that's the general rule. That's, that's pretty consistent. That happens a lot, most of the time, the great majority of the time. How can you help people as they are dying? Something, something seems to happen when you've gotten everything, everything else right for the patient. They go away, they're not responsive, there's that period of unresponsiveness. And in that period, I think there may be a real uh, disconnection from everything, like we were talking about music, that, that would be an escort rather than the words distract you or the beat distracts you. It, that kind of gentle music like we were listening to is more like a wave that you ride. Um, that's the kind of thing you want a nice smell. Talk that is just forgiving and loving and like an escort, just kind of like a ride out. Can you train others to offer this service? You just got to know in your gut that you want to do this and that you enjoy that interpersonal desire to actually make it a little better if you can. Yeah. Once you have that, then I can certainly train and help in the, in the practicality of running the thing, of, of designing, uh, of designing um, 
facility, for lack of a better word, a home. A lot of them are hospice homes mm -hmm. that I've come uh, in contact with over the years, little here, little there. But I think there are many ways of doing it. I, as I think about it and go forward myself, I, I think it would be very easy for uh, a particular kind of cancer group maybe might want to create a, a, a home somewhere. But I think it starts with a certain understanding of yourself and a certain passion to want to do it. And uh, then I could really be of help. I think if you're that person, uh, I will recognize that. I, I usually do if it's there, and uh, I trust that about me. Bill Kilgore offers workshops, consultation, and mentoring to individuals and organizations that want to learn more about hospice care and how to create a hospice home. For more information and to see the full video interview, go to surrogatesun.org.